Welcome to another episode of Armed Lutheran Radio. I'm your host, Lloyd Bailey, the Armed Lutheran, and this is episode number 328. Welcome to all of you. Thank you for making Armed Lutheran Radio a part of the week again this week. This week is our online hangout for August 2022. Yes, I know for some of you, you're watching or listening to this in September um, due to various and sundry reasons we ended up having to record this on august 31st the um the last day of the month so september you're going to get two technically two online hangouts uh for those of you who don't know what these online hangout things are well basically we're going to be hanging out hopefully with members of the cast and with some members of the reformation gun club who are the good people who help make this show possible uh, today, I want to give a shout out to Anita from Old Fort, Tennessee, Kurt from Rialto, California, Drew from Excelsior Springs, Missouri, Mitch from Stockbridge, Michigan, James from Moline, Illinois, Gordon, Anthony from Cottonwood Heights, Utah, Rich from Lawton, Michigan, Derek from Huntsville, Alabama, and our newest member, Justin from Berryville, Arkansas. Berryville, Arkansas. I haven't been to Berryville. Now I'm thinking of Perryville. Berryville and Perryville are different places. I don't think I've ever been to Berryville. Welcome, Justin. Welcome to all of you, and thank you all for your support. Um, as I say every week, folks, Armed Lutheran Radio is listener-funded. That means we rely on the Reformation Gun Club members to help keep the show going. We don't have any ads. We don't have any advertising. No sponsors. Um, so this little plug each week is as much of an ad as we include in the show. Um, that was not the case early in the early days of the show. We did have uh, sponsors uh, back then. Today, not so much. Um, uh, today, we rely on our, our members to, uh, to help keep us afloat. And if you would like to support the show, if you would like to find out more about membership in the Reformation Gun Club, check out all the benefits and all the membership tiers uh go to armedlutheran.us slash gun club or look for a link in the show notes for this or any of our previous episodes you can also find links on the website as well all right let's let's get going here we've got uh, a good group here tonight looks like and most of them are new Let's bring them all in. Let me see if I can get everybody in here. There we go. There's William. Hey, Guillaume. Hey, the guest. guest. Yes, my one of your biggest fans, my, my, my youngest daughter. Awesome. Awesome. Teaching them right. And Curtis is with us again. How are you, sir? There he is. There's Calroy. How are you? And he's connecting to audio. He hasn't heard me yet. There he is. There we go. How are you, Calroy? I'm tired. I almost missed this. I was getting out of the shower. The alarm went off. <laughs> and I looked at it and I said, I totally forgot. <laughs> well, I'm glad you made it. We've got, uh, let's see. Justin is with us as well, our newest member who I was thanking in the um, in the intro. Although he doesn't have his camera on. All right, how is everybody? Awesome. Good. <laughs> Very good. I can't tell you how many times that we planned to do there this, and and then like somehow another missed it. So. <laughs> <laughs> I totally understand. I totally understand. Justin, how are you, sir? Welcome aboard. Welcome to the club. Doing well. Thank you. Justin is our newest member, just joined this week. Welcome to the Madhouse. <laughs> 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 All right. Here's what we're going to be doing tonight. I don't know if uh, she is going to make it. Mia is uh, working this week on an article about uh, carry guns. And one of the things I want to talk about is, and we can do a little show and tell if you like, is um, your preferred carry guns and what 
what um, factors go in went into your decisions for you know what guns you prefer to carry and how you carry them. Um, but we'll we'll start with our usual kind of uh, round the horn, catching up with uh, with what everybody's been up to since last we were together. So we'll start with William, who is not in Norway. No, not this go round. <laughs> Not even in Alaska. Not even in Alaska. What have you been up to? Oh, uh, new job. Uh, actually, I, I, oh. I'm due to start on Tuesday. So, um, but we, we've just been hectic. So we got back from, from uh, Norway and immediately had some travel. Um, my two boys do uh, mountain biking. And so we had their first time trials this last weekend. So we packed up everything for that and then came back, you know, spending lots of money to live like a hobo. Um, <laughs> and then uh, now we're actually leaving for another couple of trips, uh, just fairly brief, but um, we'll, we usually rent our house out either on Airbnb or, or some other platform um, when we're out of town. So yeah. we just did that again. So we're, we're <laughs> almost completely packed up. Um, all, the, all the personal identifiers and you know other sacred objects are tucked away in the back room that get flocked. So uh, you want to talk about carry guns? We'll get to that in a minute because I, okay. I think that'll probably take up the majority of the of the show, I suspect. So we'll just <laughs> continue with our round the horn here. Guillaume, you, this is your first uh, hangout. So um, what we typically do is is we start out with just a little, hey, here's who I am. And no, we are not getting to that yet. You're starting too early. <laughs> Actually, I'm already <laughs> into mine. Um, uh, so... Um, Introduce yourself to everybody. Uh, this is your first hangout, and um, uh, Guillaume is also a, a contributor on the. I don't have a uh, anything to show, but I on this the book. <laughs> on the, the next version, the second edition of this book. Um, welcome aboard, and uh, so what have you what have you been up to lately, other than writing for some deadbeat podcaster guy? Well, you know, of course, I'm, a, I'm an LCMS pastor, so I spend all my time preaching, teaching, and preparing for preaching and teaching, um, writing daily devotions. Um, this year, I'm writing them on the uh, um, one-year series. I've completed all uh, the, the three-year series, and uh, I've completed the daily lectionary from LSB. So I'm not sure what I'm doing after this, but... Uh, <laughs> Let's do that today and this evening before um, I, uh, my daughter, my other daughter's birthday this week, and she really likes homemade ramen. And I was out of uh, scallion oil and black garlic oil, so I was I was making that this evening. Homemade uh, ramen for homemade ramen. So expensive college food. Y yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but it's much. It's it, it, it's def definitely far better tasting than than, than the. Uh, 25 cent packs. It's got to be. <laughs> when, when, you, when, when, you, when you make a stock that's, you know, takes 24 hours to, to, to make the bones and meat and everything else, you know. Right. All right. It's, it's the upper level echelon of the ramen. <laughs> <laughs> Homemade noodles and everything else, you know. Awesome. Very good. Curtis, how are you, sir? What have you been up to lately? What Since last we were together, you were at the last hangout, I think. Yes, I was. Um, well, we finished moving into our house we bought a couple months ago, so I finally got back on the road. We're doing a, we're moving coal from Alabama over to Arkansas, so we got about 30 days, maybe more of that to do. So I'm actually in the truck right now. That's probably why my audio and video ain't real good. Uh, I kind of <laughs> those up because people's running engines. Personally, I don't run a 550 horsepower engine to run an air compressor, uh, air conditioner <laughs> compressor, but some people do. <laughs> They're still, you're still hauling coal. Biden hasn't put you out of business yet. Yeah, yeah, got that Tesla fuel on board. <laughs> hey, Curtis, where in Arkansas are you going? What's that? Where in Arkansas are you, you going to uh, be, be stopping? Uh, it delivers at uh, Southwest. I'm trying to think of the name. Uh, I got it here on a piece of paper. Uh, well, if you make it there. up, if you make it up to the the northwest Arkansas area, hit me up. Okay. Stop for a cup of coffee or a beer or something. Foreman, Arkansas. I'm not sure Foreman. where that is. Foreman. 
It, it's southwest corner. Southwest corner, okay. Kind of west of Texarkana. Oh, then oh. we'll miss you. Oh, okay. I don't know where that is. I drive through that part of the state on the way to Perryville. Not Berryville. I was just saying uh, in the intro. I don't know where Berryville is. So, Justin, I'm gonna I'm gonna swing it over to you uh, as our newest member. Give us tell us a little about yourself and and uh, where remind me where Berryville is. Well, you've probably seen the name if you've seen a Nighthawk Custom or a Wilson Combat 1911. Yes. Okay, all right. I I work at one of those. <laughs> <laughs> neither confirm nor deny which one yeah yes all right, gotcha. all right. The, the one with the bird oh mm. <laughs> very good uh, but yeah that's that's my day job uh then my weekend job i'm actually on the uh cast of the great passion play over in eureka springs so nice. in uh Stay busy. Very cool. What fun stuff do you get to do at, at uh, the um, unmentioned firearm manufacturer? I am actually a gunsmith back in the custom shop. So I get oh. to touch not only oh. our 1911s, but anyone else's that come through. So we will work on anything from fitting just reliability package to complete build up. You send us a frame about six months to a year later we send you a complete pistols <laughs> nice nice cal roy we haven't seen you in a while it's good to have you back what have you been up to constantly forget that we have uh, a hangout coming up i've missed this whole years Four, actually five six yeah it's... Yeah, I remember them afterwards when I see them on YouTube. I'm like, oh, my gosh. This one I put on my calendar. Uh, and as I said before, I was getting out of the shower, getting ready to go to bed. And it goes off, and I'm like, no. So, <laughs> uh, At least you remember work to set an alarm. Yeah, because you sent me the email. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh, that's tomorrow? Whoa. Yep. Um. Our bread and butter down at the hangar is going away next month. Sophia, uh, big 747 with a telescope. And I don't know what's going to happen after that. Uh, I mean, I'm not losing a job or anything, but I don't know what project I'll go to after that. Remind everyone what uh, what your day job is. Oh, I'm an engineering technician at NASA, which is a fancy word for welder, machinist, sheet metal, <laughs> certified welding inspector. Yeah, that's pretty much, well, that's almost it. And engineers come and ask me questions about heat treating. Okay. We'll I just, used to do that at we'll, the Air Force. We'll, we'll, not, we'll not mention all that other stuff, and we'll let people just assume that you're, you're dealing with, like, spaceships and astronauts. That was cool, though, right? <laughs> that is cool. <laughs> you could be a janitor, and if you're the janitor at NASA, it's awesome. Just... Just say I work for NASA, and you just leave it at that, and everybody thinks it's yeah. Rocket Go to science. the gift store for Christmas presents. Everybody loves them. Hey, David is here. Let's see. Um, It'll be David Scott, I think. We have like four Dans and one David. David's our our only David in the bunch. There he is. How are you, David? Doing well. How are you this evening? Doing well. You're just in time because we had finished uh, going around the horn, catching up with everybody. So um, we've got a couple who uh, have never attended these hangouts before, and Calroy hasn't been here in a while. So uh, introduce yourself to everyone and give us an idea what you've been up to since uh, since you were with us last. Uh, so I'm David Scott, and I am from the city of Kennesaw, Georgia where you are required where to own a firearm. Everyone has guns. Yes. <laughs> I'm an IT guy, musician, do a lot of recording work. So Very cool. uh, enjoy those kind of things. What sort of, uh, what sort of things have you been working on lately? 
IT or uh, music wise, either one or both? Well, uh, IT, I'm in the, I support healthcare systems in IT. Right. And uh, so I'm a database person. Uh, musically, I, I direct a Georgia Festival chorus, which is a 100 voice community chorus, does right. classical and sacred music, tours internationally from time to time. We're getting ready to fire up our Christmas season next Tuesday night. It won't be long. Nope. My, how time flies. All right. Well, good to have you here again. All right. All right, William, you, you kind of, you gave us a sneak peek there. So let's go around, back around the horn again. The traditional second round is, uh, what is everyone's poison tonight? I suspect there's one who's, at least one who's not imbibing. <laughs> at least one, yeah. In fact, Ezra, stand up over here. So here, here's one of my sons. He's he's uh, just came back from mountain bike practice. He's trying to hide there. How are you? Uh, and, welcome. And, um, he says, how are you? And welcome. I forgot you got uh, headphones on. He can't hear. He can't hear, so I'm, I have to translate-ish. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, he's got a little spider bite, so we're trying to look it up. So if, uh, if it looks like I'm not paying attention, it's only because I'm not paying attention. Right, of course. So, um, And it's definitely not a brown recluse, so we're happy with that, but I don't know what it is yet. But anyway, some, uh, some Benadryl will help that for the night. Uh, so tonight, I'm starting with a cream stout from Ozark Brew. Um, it's actually, I've had it before. It's fantastic. Mm. Um, and then uh, I'll go directly from that to, I think I'm going to go Irish uh, because it's very smooth. Right. And then this, this is one that I actually brought back from Scotland with me, although I know I can get it locally here at the store. So this is Aberlour Scotch. And then if, if in fact, um, I can still see straight after that. Um, there's one that I don't think I showed you before. I may have, I don't recall, but this yeah. one here reminds me of like the Trader Joe's logo. Right. But this is a sarsaparilla flavored whiskey and i will warn you if you ever do find this jeremiah weed delicious libation of whiskey and spices spices uh, if you ever do find it it's it's fantastic uh, try it if you don't like it i'll take it off your hands um <laughs> but it is if you like sarsaparilla and uh root beer and things like i do uh it's a little too easy to drink so okay. that's just a warning a fair warning so that's that's what what's on the docket tonight and i'm Part of the reason, uh, sort of self-servingly, that I do this every every show is to add to my list of things that I need to try. So I'm going to make a note here. All right, Guillaume. I know you you guys are probably not. Um... No, no, we're we're we're, we're having um, homemade boba tea. I don't know if you can see it on there, but uh, it's basically tea and milk, and has these little uh, gel things down at the bottom there. That are made tapioca out of tapioca balls or whatever. Yeah, yeah, tapioca balls. So that, that's that's for imbibing this evening. Got it. How is it? I'm asking. I'm going to ask oh, your, par great. your partner there. How how is it? Sweet. <laughs> I like it. Approve. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Sounds great. My kids love boba tea. So boba tea. Yeah. All right, Curtis. What are well? You're driving. <laughs> yeah, no, no spirits allowed in a commercial vehicle. Nice. So I'm on home, home fermented kombucha. <laughs> okay, hey, um, that's like that's like uh, half a percent of alcohol right there. You no, I ferment it myself, so I ferment all of that stuff out. Okay, huh. all right. I don't use the commercial stuff. I do it myself. We've got yeah. some on the counter with a nice fresh scoby on top. Yep. I have several gallons going right now myself. <laughs> this is awesome. common for everyone now apparently <laughs> who knew calroy what are you up to you were just getting ready to go to bed so <laughs> i was i've got um diet dr pepper cream soda i know my wife would really she's laughing at me i know she would love it if i made a couple of mojitos it's hey, 106 Calroy. degrees here today. Hey, Calroy. Yes. I, I like to do Malibu rum in a root beer or cream soda. I've never had that particular cream soda, but you might try a dash of Malibu if you have it sitting around. Uh, I it have some Plantation really well Three soda. Star rum that I've, I've become quite fond of. I might try it with that. Well, it's the coconut stuff. It's It's got its own flavor and smoothness to it that 
Yeah, I don't. I don't. I think I'll try. Have regular. Also, I like your taste. I've got a bottle of Abalor over there next to the twelve-year-old Macallan, and the Abalor is my favorite since I was, a, you know, teenager. I mean, since uh, I was. Uh, a, wait well, a minute. No, it was eighteen in Hawaii when I was a kid. <laughs> we were absolutely allowed to drink that. Telling on yourself here. Ask him if he's tried screwball. No. Okay, so my wife that's a, that's asked if you've tried stuff. screwball. Yep. But Lloyd loves screwball. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> my wife loves screwball. I, so is... for me tonight, just some pop. All right. Justin, how about you? This is your your first time. Don't let us down. What do you got? Well, being a, 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 a long-time guy. listener, I, w- I was prepared. So <laughs> let's see if... So we've got Panama Pacific. It is a 15-year-old rum, mm. Spanish-style rum from Panama. So yeah, something. <laughs> yeah, very very nice. I'm a big rum rum guy. And well, Justin, did I yes. see that you had a, a, a Glen Carn glass so you could really bring the uh, bouquet out? I, I yep. thought I saw one. Okay, well done. Yeah, no, I uh, uh, certified Cicerone, and I was working on my song before i left colorado's <laughs> so <All right>. yes <laughs> all right bring us home david what are what do you got well at least it's in he's a good muted <laughs> david you're muted at the moment there, there, there we go. go there we go all right now i'm just dealing with a little bit of alka seltzer so ah, okay. <laughs> gotcha okay you started before we did <laughs> well, I've already told everybody, showed everybody what I've got. This is, of course, as everyone knows, my favorite. So, and I haven't had it, and I'm now out. So that's really a sad story. So I know where I'm going tomorrow. All right. Well, let's go. Let's get to uh, Mia was was had posted on the, the Facebook group a question about because she's writing an article about carry guns and what the important factors are for everyone in terms of why you select the guns that you choose to carry. Um, so let's go around the horn a- again. I'll get back. William, you'll, you'll lead us off. Um, since you were so eager to do so before, we will talk about what, what do you carry now and what were the, the, the factors that went into why you carry that? Well, I've got the, the family of Glocks, and I, I like to tend to them because uh, they, 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 they treat me good. Other than the fact that I get Glock bite every right. time I shoot it, I've got to get one of those aftermarket beaver tails. Um, but I, I usually carry the 19. Um, and, and if you don't mind me showing, I'll just uh, show sure. a, a little bit of, um, are you guys familiar with the Filster Enigma? This is that whole complete carry system thing, belt yes. holster combination. Yep. So it's yep. it's a chassis, like a, a plate, if you will, that you attach a holster to. It comes with its own belt. You wear it inside the waist uh, in the appendix position. And I won't I won't disrobe because uh, for obvious reasons. But for obvious um, reasons. But I'm just wearing a t-shirt, and you know it. Let me pull that down just a little bit, and that's all I'm wearing is two layers of t-shirt. And you can kind of see the shelf of my belt because it sticks out a little bit farther. But if I push really hard, you can kind of see the outline right about here. There's the grip. But if I'm not doing that, it's really, it, it, it hides it really well. And, and I've got a few extra pounds on, so it's not like I'm stick thin, but it's a really, really good hiding system. And I'll pull it up just a little bit so I'm not un- undressing, but... There's the, the chassis, got a little closer. There's the chassis right there. I put a little clip to keep the pants from riding up and hiding access to the, the grip. Right. But the whole thing just sits under the clothes, doesn't have to be attached to them. And it's, it's really fantastic. And, and I use the, the, uh, the Filster Pro holster on this, which is the length of a, a 17. So it's got the longer, longer length slide. So I can wear the 17 if I want. Or because it's a Glock and I'm cheap like that and I like to have one holster that fits multiple size uh, hardware, I can carry the, the 19, I can carry the 26, uh, and of course any of the others in the standard size, uh, the 40 cal 357 SIG, um, because they all fit in the same dimensions. Yep. So, um, and I've been doing that a lot. Um, uh, otherwise, I'd be carrying around the three to four o'clock position 
uh, inside or outside the hip, but this is comfortable. I've got it dialed in. As you can see on, on the original model, it's got uh, a bunch of different holes that you can select from. Um, it's got, you can't see it here and I'm not going to pull it out at the moment, but it's got the claw that comes out. Right. So as it tightens down, either with my belt or with the, the, the plate, it tucks the grip in. And so it keeps it from tipping out because the holster is so long. It also works against the belt and it keeps it from tipping out forward. And then, uh, because I'm bony, uh, I put one of those wedges on. It's actually just a hunk of foam. Um, Nothing particularly special. I literally just cut it out of a, a package that we got probably from Amazon. Gotcha. Um, and I've got it uh, Velcro to the inside. I've got a, a Dr. Scholl's heel cup that I, I sometimes swap out depending on uh, how much I want it to stick to my shirt. Um, but it's comfortable. Um, it's it's weird because you got to get over breaking one of the fundamental the four fundamental rules of not wanting to point it at something that's important. Um, right. But with a modern with a modern gun, um, I, I don't think there's uh, quite the, the issue of random uh, random rounds going off in the chamber. So. Right. Um, other than that, this thing's comfortable. It's it's amazing. Very cool. So the so for you, it was familiarity with with the Glocks and the comfort of the carry gear. And that was the bottom line for you. Yeah, my first gun was a what uh, our friends on the left might call a Saturday night special um, was a, I don't even know if the company's still in business. Davis arms is a, a little 380 One caliber ring of fire companies. Yeah. The, something yeah. like that. So it, it, it's um, my brother gave it to me. And so all I had to do is pay for the transfer. Uh, and it, you know, it, it worked for a while until me who never cleaned it, it uh, kept shooting it. And finally the slide literally snapped. Um, so when I finally bought my first gun that was a um, little higher quality, I did a lot of research and decided to go with Glock. I knew there's a lot of aftermarket parts, um, you know, pretty, pretty vanilla choice there, right. but it's been, it's been a good choice. It fits well, aside from the, the Glock bite that, that I get from time to time. Right. Um, and, um, yeah, I've got several in the same family. I can use the same holsters, even though I still have a, a nice big box of holsters. Um, I don't have, I don't have three or four of them because I don't have three or four platforms. I really just have the one platform at the moment. So, right. uh, yeah. And I'd, I'd love to get into the, the P365 realm at some point, just because I like the size I've held them. They, they fit really, really comfortably. Uh, and then I know exactly which holsters I would buy to complement it. I would probably want to end up with a big old, you know, bucket of those because I've already been through a bunch. But yeah, so Glock right now, um, and it's uh, either either strong side, um, three or four o'clock, or uh, appendix. Okay. All right, Guillaume, how about you? And and uh, do you what what do you carry? Do you carry every day? What was the decision making like for you? Uh, well, as a poor pastor with five kids. Price was <laughs> under right. things, and uh, I end up. I, I, I generally carry a uh, Smith and Wesson Sigma forty and a milt, milt uh, side inside the waistband uh, leather holster. Okay, and then I also carry. Um, if I go into the city, I also carry in uh, a Taurus PT millimeter. millimeter. That, you know, I just have that sit in my pocket and a you know, in a pocket holster type thing. Okay. My my other carry is 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 a uh, is a knife, <laughs> yep. which is a Bram Magnum. Um, let's see if I got it on me here. And uh, all right. See. But uh, I, uh, I I I'm not I'm not just into guns. <laughs> <laughs> You mentioned you mentioned in your your article for the second edition of the book all the different things that you are uh, into. Give us a little bit of a, a taste of some of that and and why you chose those disciplines. Well, I'm I'm a third degree black belt in Han Mudo, which is a Korean martial art uh, that I learned in my first call in New Orleans, and that's just basically I mean, Aikido, ta Taekwondo. Korean judo, all that wrap up together. Um, and then 
I picked up the study of a uh, of a uh, Rakita Tercia Kali, just here's this stick fighting and, and whatnot. Um, and I'm currently working with a fellow in Ireland, another fellow in Argentina. I'm learning Doyle Irish stick fighting and and a Bonafont cane fighting. That's that's down in Argentina. And then I do Piper uh, knife systems, which is a uh, an ambush system that they, it's basically they watched what the criminals do in South Africa and then systematized it. <laughs> and then your job is once you learn that, it, you have to learn how to defeat it. So first you, first you learn it, and as you're learning, you figure out, how am I going to stop this? <laughs> <laughs> right? So, so you're ready for anything by the time. I'm ready done. for anything. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, my, you know my, my family is down in New Orleans, you know, and so if we go into the quarter and whatnot, you know, you just got, you know, anything could happen. <laughs> right. And usually does. <laughs> right. Mm. All right. Curtis, how about you? Um, if I'm around the farm, I'm normally carrying my Ruger Red Hawk in uh, 357 Magnum. If I'm out and about somewhere, it's usually my uh, XDM that I carry and I carry that and I'm a simple guy, I just carry it in a belly bag. Okay. What was the, what was the thinking behind the choice of, of, well, let's go, let's talk about the XDM, what, the choice of why that particular firearm and why that particular method of carry. I'm, um, I'm, I, I, I'm that helping my... write this article. Maybe, maybe Mia will uh, send me some royalties. Yeah, probably not any help from, from me, but yeah, I, I didn't have a 40 cal before and I was looking for a semi-auto and 40 cal and uh, I'm, I'm kind of a Ruger and Smith and Wesson guy. I've got quite a few of each of those. So I just, I, and it took me a long time. It was a bicolor XDM and it took me a long time to get it. I had to order it for quite a while. Okay. But, uh, I'm happy with it. It shoots well. All right. Calroy, how about you? I'm I'm guessing that NASA doesn't let you carry it at work. <laughs> no, and um, also at main campus is at Edwards Air Force Base, and they don't like it either. Right. Uh, my favorite is my 1911, mm -hmm. but what I usually actually carry is a Glock 30s. Okay. Because I actually carry it, whereas if I carry my 1911, there'll be times when I want to go to the store and I just won't because it's heavy, but it's so much more fun to shoot. Right. The 30S is a subcompact 10 round 45. Right. And it is not fun to shoot. No, I had one. No. I had a 30 and a 36 and it was not, neither of those were fun. No, but it, I don't carry it to be fun. Yeah, and when exactly. My wife and I go to the range to be fun. I, I've got that 1911. 1911. Yes, that one is fun. I could, I could um, unload reloading supplies all day long with that thing. So the so the choice for you then was was comfort because you knew you know as you just said you're not going to carry it if it's not comfortable to carry. Because I would actually carry it. Yeah. 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 It was a 1911 for a while, uh, and then it went to plus. Um, I'm also lucky enough to actually live in a county in California where you could get one before Bruin, and they're going to fight it now the way New York is. They have a law, a proposed law that will make it illegal for me to walk out the gate because there's a church across the street from my house, and it will be illegal to carry on the church grounds, parking lot, and adjacent streets. Which pretty much means I can't leave the driveway uh, unless I unload everything, put it in a box, lock Sneak it up, out the back drive gate. down the driveway, get everything back out, go down to the end of the street. But since the end of the street, there's a grocery store with alcohol. Same thing. The <laughs> grocery store complex, parking lot, and adjacent streets. Schools, parking lot, adjacent streets. Anywhere where the anything to do with medical which means the dentist and the strip mall. So the whole strip mall, parking lot, adjacent streets. So yeah. they've weaponized, basically weaponized zoning laws against gun owners. It won't stand, but 
you know, it's it's the whole hassle of it until you have to do the uh, dance overturned. until it, it works its way through the courts. Yeah. Yep. So sorry. Yeah, my wife says hopefully. <laughs> she just these topics make her upset. Wait, are you living in occupied America out in yes. California? Yeah, oh, yes. we, we left there a year and a half ago and it's nice to be in America, to be quite honest. <laughs> yeah. But my job um, is uh, aerospace R and D and the lake beds mean that I'm pretty much gonna be here where it's convenient to crash. The the lake beds here are really easy on aircraft when they crash on them. Um, mm. We had a B-1 bomber one year. Nose gear wouldn't come down. They landed it with no nose gear on the lake bed. And it was up and ready to fly back um, in like a week and a half. Wow. Holy cow. Because of how little damage that lake bed does to wow. aircraft. Wow. So it's a great place to crash. Great place to crash. Not a great place to live. <laughs> <laughs> No, but Kern County has Bakersfield and it's full of Okies and desert rats. So this county's actually pretty good. No alcohol. <laughs> All right, Justin. <laughs> Dan, we'll we'll get to you last and you can you can uh you can answer multiple questions at once. So uh Justin, uh, how about you? What is uh what do you carry and and what is uh what were the factors involved in in why? Well, Given where I work, everyone, everyone does carries. carry simply because it's like, well, there's like hundreds of 1911s around us. <laughs> it's not like it would uh, it would matter much, but you uh, would probably draw more questions if you didn't, I guess. Pretty much. Uh, so, <laughs> of course, first we've got just Kershaw, nice little just pocket folder, and you gotta you gotta start somewhere. That probably gets more use than anything else. So it's it's just that idea of everyday carry of I use a flashlight and my knife more than anything. <laughs> um, but I carry a uh, strong side in. Yep. So I'm like looking at my little tiny screen to see, <laughs> make sure I'm getting everything in. So uh, alien gear alien inside gear. the waistband. Okay. There, three, four o'clock. And today's visual aid, it was, yep. So. Ooh. The A-Rex, Rex-01. Uh, so that's uh, aluminum framed, DASA, kind of like a, a SIG 226 clone. 226, yeah. Uh, I really like it. I'm as accurate with that as I am with the, you know, four or $5,000 1911s I work on. <laughs> right. Like, there is some advantage I shoot every day. And... So I keep in, keep in practice. That's a big one is something that you can find the ammo for it and you can practice with it. Um, I like this one. I used to carry a uh, Glock 23. I like having that kind of like second strike double action if I need it. Uh, this has got both uh, manual safety and a decocker. So if I want to carry it cocked and locked, like I've been like a 1911, I can or carry it hammered down. Um, I like the sights on this one, but over a Glock sights, just right. easier for me to see. So yeah, usability, weight, like I say, with that aluminum frame, nice big factor there. Um, conceal conceals well. I mean, but yeah, I I see a lot of guys carrying 1911s. One of our uh, the lead gunsmith back in the custom shop daily carries a Glock 43. <laughs> We, uh, Little of the, the CEO actually, he gives us a lot of guff back, back in the custom shop. Cause I don't think any of us actually carries a 1911. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, wait, no, the new, the new guy does. The he carries, he carries a, yeah, he of carries course the new guy does. <laughs> it's always the new guy. He doesn't know better yet. All right, yeah. David, how about you? Dan and, and Pastor, uh, we'll get to you last, and you'll get to, to answer multiple questions at the same time. So. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, both of you, by the way. Uh, David, uh, what is your choice for, for everyday carry, and, and why? I carry typically carry a SIG P938, okay. uh, miniature 1911, 9 mil, uh, strong side and sideways band, 
uh, in a holster from uh, the well-armed woman of all places. My wife had, uh, uh, my wife and I both uh, are uh, instructors and uh, of some sort. And so uh, she came on these holsters and I liked the way it fit the gun. Uh, she carries a uh, Glock uh, 43, I carry a uh, 938. Uh, I got that gun because of its accuracy. Uh, <clears throat> a friend of mine calls me up to the range and says, why don't you try out this gun? I think it's not working right. So he hands me his 938, and at 21 feet, I put everything touching on a quarter. Um, so it was like, Oh man, you just cost me seven hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> so I went and bought one. Uh, prior to that, I had carried a Ruger LC9. Um, if uh, I suspect I want a little bit more oomph, uh, I'll go with uh, Glock 19 Gen 3 uh, and uh, Galco King Tuck. I think it is. It's the same pattern as the Alien Gear. Right. Uh, you know, that, uh, you know, tuckable kind inside the, waistband. Right. Okay. Um, but I like the 930, and I've got a couple of buddies who, uh, <laughs> after seeing the 938 and what it can do, uh, a couple of my buddies are now carrying them uh, because it's just tremendously accurate. Uh, or in the famous words of the movie, you can put your eye out with that thing, kid. <laughs> it's a good gun. Dan, welcome to you. Uh, you get to answer, actually, I, I, I'm undercounted. You guys get to answer three questions. Awesome. Um, so first Be off, right um, what have you been up to since last we were together? And, uh, and then we'll, and then we'll go, we'll answer the, actually, I'll let you and then the pastor take turns on that one. And then we'll, we'll do the, <laughs> what are you, what's your poison tonight question? And then we'll do the guns. So uh, what have you been up to? <laughs> Uh, I've been up to all kinds of things. Uh, we have a lot of changes happening at work and uh, a lot of people are freaked out and I am just enjoying breezing through it and leading everybody to happiness at the end. So it's working out. We're bringing good people on board and, and it's, it's really been a lot of fun. Change is usually kind of scary, but, um, you know, this time we got some really good people, so it's good. Uh, what I'm drinking tonight uh, went with the uh, standard Knob Creek rye because it's always good. It's the old and standby. That, that, that's what I'm drinking tonight. <laughs> um, and that's two questions. John, why don't you take over? It's nice to see you again, by the way, my friend. How are you, Pastor? And we can't. Hear He's you. quiet. He's very quiet. He's lost his voice. <laughs> It's that cheap microphone I sent him. Well, at, at least you look good, John, but we can't hear you. <laughs> Clearly, he can hear us. <laughs> All right. There, there he is. <laughs> the sultry tones. That's usually, yeah. That, well, I don't know why this thing isn't working, but I switched to just the MacBook Pro built in microphone. So, um, That's good. You should talk Things to the, the showrunner about getting you better equipment, I guess. I need to do that. I guess. I think he's still waiting for me to submit my chapter for the upcoming book. And you know, maybe then. Could be. I'm holding I'm holding a new microphone hostage. That's right. Pastors don't procrastinate ever. Never. Uh, well, heck, never. you only got to work one day a week. So that's right. I, I get paid pretty darn work? good for a guy who works one day who a works? week. Helen's daughter's just laughing her head off. <laughs> um so what have you been up to since uh since last we were together well i would have been here earlier if i hadn't had to be at a meeting um i drive school bus on the side because uh well i gotta pay tuition for my daughter now <laughs> um we have the the advantage of having a, a parochial lutheran high school here and yeah it's it's money, but it's money well spent. Um, been kind of running around like a chicken with my head cut off the last month. Um, we, uh, I, I volunteer to do all the IT stuff at, at the school where the wife teaches. And I got done setting up 
40 MacBook Airs for the students, so that was a lot of fun. Mm. Um, but uh, my uh, this last weekend, my wife finally took a class to get her permit to carry. Oh, that's awesome. Nice. nice. How'd it go? The instructor was a FUD. Most of them are. <laughs> Um, for some reason, he basically picked on me the whole time and tried to make a joke out of everything. And, and then really? he had his, yeah. And now the convenience of this is that members of the congregation, they had this guy come out to their house. He said, if they have at least five people who'll come out and do it at the house. So there was nine of us, but for the range portion, he had us standing side by, you know, two shooters at a time. And my wife, who has shot maybe three times in her life, mm. who is already gun shy, I bought a, a, a Beretta Cheetah in 32 ACP because she's recoil shy. So I shoot as fast as I can just to get it out of the way so that she's not too nervous. Um, you hold on, honey. Yeah. Here, let me get out of the way. Bo, bo, bo. The thing that was really disappointing, though, is that you know, the, the family that invited us said, well, he does, he works really well with, with the, the female shooters and the unexperienced shooters. Oh, really? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> they said he did last time, but this time, you know, it's my wife. She's, she hasn't shot this gun except for, I mean, she'll shoot five rounds and then she wants to be done. And, uh, and so she shot five rounds and he, instead of trying to help her with her technique he says here try this instead and, and hands her a ruger sr22 um well she doesn't carry a ruger sr22 she's going to be right. carrying the the beretta plus you know i don't trust rimfire to go bang every single time you pull the trigger right so um so yeah that was that was interesting but uh other uh, than that but she training passed. with women is always interesting and anytime i get to train some women who are new, I bring along a competent woman with me because she can help with the stuff that I just don't understand. Sure. <laughs> sure. And this is, this is why my wife is now an instructor. Good. Excellent. Uh, so yeah, we're NRA certed, um, but we found so much crud going on uh, with gender issues uh, that, that she sort of took over and she's a good instructor, has an educational background. Excellent. Um, as a music teacher. So, um, actually understands compassion and, you know, being able to talk to people where they are and help them where they are. Um, and, and so, uh, but beware, she can shoot as well as anybody else does. <laughs> good. Well, yeah. we don't have an excuse here because my local range is the backyard. I, I just need to coax her outside a little more often to get some more practice. And next time I'm in town, I need to come over and shoot at your range. Yes, you do. <laughs> I, I saw your video. Is that the one with the field, that huge field out there? Yeah. No, it's nice. Yeah, it's. I can shoot in a mile uh, um, with nothing for a mile. And... Uh, it's great. Um, although, I mean, there, there's a cemetery in between myself and the end of that mile. So I don't think they're going to complain too much though. <laughs> so you're shooting pistols at one mile, dude, I want to shoot with you. <laughs> <laughs> that, that that's the amount of room I have before there's any buildings. So I'm yeah. Nice. And, I mean, I can shoot a pistol at a mile. I have no <laughs> idea what the heck I'm going to hit, but I can do it. <laughs> Just get a good 45 degree angle on the trajectory and I'll be all right. There you go. So, uh, what are you, what's your poison tonight? Tonight I'm drinking a, uh, peanut butter cup, <laughs> peanut butter whiskey with chocolate liqueur. Ooh, nice. I'd try it. It wouldn't be my first choice, but I would try that. That's how I got turned on to this was Pastor Larry Bean in down in Gretna, Louisiana, had posted a picture of this bottle with a bottle of chocolate liqueur and described it as being like drinking a peanut butter, a Reese's peanut butter cup. And I said, Ooh, okay. I got to try that. 
and I don't even bother with the chocolate anymore because this is fantastic. <laughs> well, <laughs> you just put a nipple on the top of the bottle and <laughs> kick her back? <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> now, there was one episode that Lloyd and I recorded where uh, I, I brought out a, a bottle of uh, apple pie moonshine and I didn't bring a glass and that was a mistake. That was a huge mistake. There was, I don't know whether we had planned, uh, which episode was that we were, you said, you know, you ought to just release this as one big episode. And I was thinking, or do it as two episodes. That's what it was. You were like, just because it ended up being like an hour and a half long. I don't oh, what, that was the moment we were talking about, you know, if we could make a red flag, the red well, flag what would it look thing. like? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> and, and you were nursing this bottle of moonshine along as we were going. And at the end, I was looking at it. I was like, I've got an hour and a half of content. What do I do with this? And you said, just cut it in half and make two shows. I was like, okay. <laughs> I went back and listened. Your mic discipline went, exp like there was, th as you were, were drinking, <laughs> as the drinking went this way, the mic discipline went that way. It was almost inversely proportional. It was so, it was hilarious. And so- Was I like coherent to, though? Mostly, yes. Okay, good. Okay. Well. <laughs> this is why I like the Reformation Gun Club. So I, released, <laughs> so I released that to the club instead of to the public. <laughs> uh, that, I'm not sure whether this is public consumption. It's hilarious, but it's not public consumption, I don't think. One of these days, we, you know, and I don't know if you want to do it once a quarter or once a month, but we have to do like a, a video version of Clinging to God and Guns. We do. And, and call it like how the sausage is made or something just to show the whole thing <laughs> uncut. Yep. Yep. We've got to do that. Maybe we can start doing that next month. Uh, so the third question, um, and we'll, Dan, I'll go back to you. The one that, that Mia was posing on the, on the, the, uh, fans of arm Lutheran Facebook page was about carry guns, why you chose them. What are the factors that are most important to you when you're deciding on what to carry? So that's uh, I'll, pastor gets to think about that for a moment, Dan, what, uh, what is your choice currently? And, and what did, what went into that decision? Well, a, a good carry gun is a gun you can shoot well. Um, doesn't matter what it is. Doesn't matter what flavor. It doesn't matter anything about how it looks or how cool it is or how cheap or expensive. Your carry gun needs a gun that you can shoot well. Um, and then you need to learn how to carry it. And there's so many different ways to carry firearms. Uh, I, currently, I carry a P320. It has a custom Merzon grip and uh, I've done a little trigger work on it because I do trigger work on all my guns. Um, it, it's comfortable. Um, I like it. It's not for everybody. Um, and did you say I, you don't I, like it? No, I do I, like okay. it. Okay. Not all I people like you it. said it's comfortable. I don't like it, but <laughs> that's what I thought. <laughs> Maybe. I've so, much. Uh, but people ask me, what kind of gun should I buy? And I, I can't tell you. I, I can tell you what works really well for me, but you might try it and it's going to suck. You're not going to be able to shoot <laughs> with it. You're going to be uncomfortable with it. Um, so you just need to try some different things. Um, I carried for many years, um, uh, I, I carried a P227 SIG <laughs> that I really love and, and I still have it. I still shoot it. it it's a beautiful gun, double action, single action. And I, you know, a couple years ago, I kind of decided maybe getting into something striker fired would be good. P320 was good. Um, I was able to uh, purchase one for a decent price. And I had to get the trigger upgrade on it because it wasn't it, the voluntary trigger upgrade. I, d I don't believe that it was necessary. But in order to get the caliber exchange kit from SIG, that converted it from a nine millimeter to a 357 SIG, I needed to have the upgrade done. So when I can carry a full size firearm, I carry a P320 chambered in 357 SIG and it has a custom Merzon grip. When I need to deep conceal and when I need 
people to not have any idea that I'm carrying a firearm, I carry a P365. Cool. And both of those guns for me work well. I can shoot both of them well, and both of them are very comfortable for me. Doesn't mean they're for everybody. Um, everybody needs to find what works for them. Pastor, how about you? Uh, my my daily carry has been a, a Glock 43, but I've thought about changing to something a little bit different. Um, I've been look, thinking about the Glock 43X, and part of that is because uh, Shield Arms makes a 15-round flush-fitting magazine for the 43X. Ooh. Okay. So, yeah, so you get something that's got the, the grip is maybe three-quarters of an inch longer than the 43 but you've got 15 rounds plus one. Uh, I yes. do use a mag guts. If you've heard of the company, they make base plates and that kind of thing. They have a plus two base plate. So uh, it adds about, oh, about three eighths of an inch. And uh, so that bumps it up to eight rounds instead of six. Um, so but the decision the one... on the 43 was what? Just the size, the, the comfort of carry. What was the, what was the decision there? I'm a fatty and I want something that fits in my front pocket. <laughs> that's that's the fair enough. Honesty. Fair enough. That's so, enough reason. In fact, I, I haven't even taken it off since I got home from my meeting, but I have um, Alabama leather makes a really nice Kydex holster and uh, it, it just, it works really great. Um, so I, I did a lot of practice drawing with, with it empty and, uh, that holster, it, it's comfortable and it really doesn't print much at all. So, so the the thinking on the forty three X though, you're talking about a little bit longer in the grip, just a tad. That, but it fits this holster too. So, right. Does that you know. change the method of carry at all, or is it? No, because uh, you know when I took this this permit to carry class, <laughs> two of the other guys there, one guy had a forty three X, another guy had a forty three. Um, I I shot. Uh, a full size Chanik just for fun because I hadn't shot it in a year or so. Fun guns, they are. And uh, he, both of these guys thought their sights were way off because <laughs> the broad side of a barn. It's always the sights. Yeah, and oh, so I said, well, crappy. you know, <laughs> I've got a, I've got a laser round that I can check the accuracy and let you know. So since it was a forty three X, I, you know, swapped out with my forty three and put it in my pocket and it fit just fine. So. So was it, was it the sights or was it just that, like that chart? Oh, says, yeah. Talk. The sights are off by three feet for some reason. No, it was. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know, that's what I always say. <laughs> <laughs> and I was practicing a little bit with my 43 the other day and it had been a while since I practiced with it. And I was reminded of why I need to practice more often because <laughs> shooting a compact pistol it's a lot harder to be accurate. Um, yes, it is. Just the amount of muzzle flip, you know, and I told the guys, you got to have a bear grip on that, that pistol to be accurate with it. Right. And um, so. When I come see you, I'll have my 365. You can try that. <laughs> muzzle flip is not a problem. Not nice. A problem. Yep. You know, it'd be really helpful though. And, and I know that there's, you know, I don't think this is a factory option think it's something that you know you have to get a custom build is these small pocket sized pistols they should come ported automatically that would really help well, with that muzzle flip you know depending on the caliber it may or may not help um something like a 45 i, I don't care how cool of of a setup you have on it um it's not going to help. Your, your, no, no, your the ported barrel is not going to help. Yeah. A nine millimeter is just getting to the velocity where it might help a little bit. But these little guns, they don't. It, it, I, I've, I've shot these little small guns with ported barrels, and you know, gosh, it really doesn't help all that really? much. It really doesn't because you, you don't have the energy and the velocity that you need for it actually to do something. Sure. Now I, I'm, I'm sure it helps some I'm and to call they William look out cool. for waving the onion rings around at us. <laughs> Air fryer for the win. 
<laughs> my son loves making them and i'm like i love eating them this is a great combination here that works <laughs> perfect <laughs> well, speaking of guns that are not fun to shoot but i i shoot pretty well and and carry fairly well both of my summer options are basically in that in that range so this is this is the the, the typical everyday carry uh good gun throw that in the uh, in an appendix carry holster it is a um, performance center and the trigger is really really nice but it's also an air weight so it it's not fun is that the 642 yeah yeah the, the, with 38 plus p uh yeah it, it'll take you for a ride but they do shoot well and you can run yeah. some rounds off and they're reliable as reliable as all get out exactly and and it's oddly it's really comfortable to carry you would think with the big bulgy you know with the the that bulge of the the cylinder but because it's rounded and so am i it <laughs> seems to work it just seems to work well it seems to work well for me so i regularly carry a 642 in an ankle holster as a backup and then my cuz i can throw that at anybody and anybody can use it sunday carry in a pocket holster nice is the ruger lcp um until it gets cold and then i'll wear something on the a little bigger on the waist on the waistband under my coat but when it, do you have a challenge controlling the lcp that's one of the least comfortable guns to it shoot. It is horribly uncomfortable to shoot. <laughs> I used to have one and got rid of it because it sucked to shoot. Yeah. We and keep it, but only because. Ugh. Yeah. It's, it's, I've carried the LCP for years and it, it works for, for summer carry for just running to the store, throw it in the pocket, uh, run to church, throw it in the pocket. It's not something I would, it, it's all it's very dependent on one time of year and to where i'm going so if it's if it's a situation where i know my surroundings better church two miles down the street to the grocery store where i'm just grabbing a you know something really quick and coming home throw that in the pocket and i'm and i'm good i used to carry like i like i was saying earlier the 30 I don't think it was a 30 it was a 30 sf uh so it was the the slim frame 30 uh, glock 30 carried a 19 for years carried a 26 for years and just over the over time it became you know especially when you start working from home there's the the the, the investment in trying to put the stuff on just to run down the street to grab a you know, a loaf of bread was, I found myself not doing it. And so I said, all right, I got, let's reassess this and try to figure out it. Cause in, for me, the, the important factor is, will I carry it? And if it was easier for me to just run out without it. And I found myself doing that. And that made me reassess my idea of what worked for me in those situations. So yeah, I, these aren't fun. To, this isn't a ranged gun at all. But this is a if I if I need it I got it and I can I know how to shoot it so. Well, what I usually recommend to people um, is uh, first of all find a gun you're comfortable with find it it fits good it feels good you're able to shoot it well shoot it. And, and and get yourself a holster and and I I, I train a lot of people from all different walks of life and. A lot of people are apprehensive of carrying a firearm in public. I get it. I, I understand that. I, I you know, it, it's you have a lethal weapon on your body and, and that's a hurdle for some people. But what I usually tell people to do is carry it at home. Um, whatever you're wearing at home, get yourself a holster of some kind that you can carry it at home all the time because statistically the chances of something happening at your home as opposed to at the 7-eleven or at the safeway or at the uh, grocery store or something uh, statistically it, it's more apt to happen at your home hundred percent you don't home want to run to your home. bedroom and grab a gun you want to grab it off your hip so find something that you can carry 
carry it around the house all the time and you'll be comfortable with it. It'll be something that's just there. And when you do have to run to the store, all you got to do is run to the store. You don't have to go grab your gun or think about if you want to have your gun or think about it. You just go to the store because it's already on you. Well, that's good advice. Excellent advice. All right. We are, it's been over an hour. Where did the time go? This is the biggest hangout we've ever had. By the way. <laughs> Most usually it's, and it, it's, it's all Guillaume's fault. He, he was here first and everybody else followed. So we're going to give him the credit today or his, hey, daughter, we're all the followers. Or his daughter. It's probably her. It's probably her influence. That's right. I also wanted to show this off. It's a knife I made before I. Ooh. Ooh. Range. Outstanding. Nice. Wow. Sweet. What'd you make I the handle out of? Those. What did you make? What the is the handle? Um, Martin's walnut. A dead tree. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. <laughs> that looks great. How does it work? Have you used it? Um, I've used it somewhat. I used to keep it in one of the purses that my dad actually made, but that nice. one since broken and I he's needing to repair it so I don't have it on me as much. Well, he needs to fix that. <laughs> I did fix Come on now. All right, Dad, get on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah I, I also make knives. <laughs> awesome. So he taught me how to make one and I made this one pretty much all on my own. So that was cool. Nice. That's, That's a beautiful awesome. knife. That is awesome. I like it. All right. Well, folks, thank you so much for, for taking the time to on a Wednesday night to come hang out with us. Um, uh, I know this was an unusual uh, choice of, of day and time, but Saturday was not going to work and it was going to be September. So I figured let's, let's do the August hangout in August. That just makes sense. Um, but Saturdays, uh, Saturday, this coming Saturday, the, I become volleyball dad again. Um, ah, there are worse things in life. There are, there are. I'm really looking forward to yeah. it. My, my, my daughter made the uh, middle school team and now nice. their first match is tomorrow night. And then we go to Sanger for, a, which is, I don't even know. It's like an hour away for a, a, a middle school tournament over the weekend. Uh -huh. and so I just knew that wasn't going to work. So let's, Let's do it on the last day of August. And I really appreciate it. If this works out and everybody will show, then let's do this again next time. We'll do it on the very last day of the month in the middle of the month. <laughs> Let me pencil it in. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, what, Wednesdays actually work for me now because I'm doing confirmation on Sunday mornings instead. So <laughs> yeah. Wednesdays. That's how you do mind. Yeah, and that's yeah. My daughter starts confirmation in a in a week or two weeks. So yeah, and I'm hoping the kids actually come to church more often too. So that's always a good thing. Yeah, always a good thing. All right. Yeah. Well, thank thank you all so much for for taking the time. I really do appreciate it. I enjoy these hangouts a lot, and it's great to have a big a big group together. Yes. Um, Justin, welcome aboard. Uh, thank you for joining the club this week. It's it's uh, and I'm I'm glad that you were able to make your very first uh, very first hangout. <laughs> Calroy, it's good to see good to have seen you again. Haven't seen you in a while, and I hope uh, hope you and the family are doing well. Curtis, drive safe. William, stop teasing us with the the onion rings. Uh, <laughs> he's a free spirit <laughs> any and, uh, update on the audible version of uh the second uh that's funny you should mention that i was Ooh. um i Ooh. was actually making some plans to start recording Great. uh i've got all of the editing done <laughs> The index is done, with the exception, of course, of I've got two chapters that I'm waiting for. <clears throat> really? <clears throat> what what is that is? <laughs> <laughs> I got mine in months ago. <laughs> um, I thought I was late. <laughs> I, and to to in Pastor's defense, he's had he's had it's been a kind of a crazy month. So I am 
and I have had tons of editing to do. So it's, I'm not in a four weeks in a month. He works four days. Come on. I know. What in the world? Well, hey, some months it's five. Okay. You got to get that's right. Okay. Oh, okay. We'll, every, we'll give him every that. 13 weeks. He, he was at a meeting today. That, that's the only time. That's I'm right. Like, that's work. right. <laughs> but no, the, the challenge for me, the challenge for me is my wife's a school teacher. So the entire summer, the wife and kids are all home and my office is in the home. So it makes it a little challenging, but uh, yeah. Yep. And right. Lloyd, the more and more I look at that cover, the more and more I like it. Uh, yeah, you look good there. You're really nice. Thank you. I, I, it turned out a lot better than I imagined. I, I just, I, I had this image in my head and it wasn't that good. I sent it off to the, to the artist and I said, well, here's what I have in mind. And here's what I did last time. And so I sent a picture of the cover of the first version. And the one I got back looked like the first version. I said, no, 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 no. Wait a minute. Maybe I should be a little more explicit about what I'm looking for here. So I, I had to describe it and, and he came back and it was just, it was fantastic. Oh, he done good. So Looks great. what I'm to Curtis, to answer your question, I am now that I've got most of the editing done, um, I plan to start recording chapters for an audio book, probably maybe next month. Uh, once I get, cause I figure I've got a three day vacation coming in middle of October. And I'm thinking that'll be a good time to just sit down and start knocking out chapters. So that sounds um, like working on a vacation, Lloyd. It does, <laughs> but it's fun. I, I mean, okay. <laughs> this, this stuff to me is fun. If I could do this for a living, I would be so happy. This would be fantastic. Just writing this <laughs> stuff and recording and hanging out with you guys would be, that would be, that's my dream, but it's never going to happen. So. <laughs> oh, never say never. <laughs> right. Right. Anything's it's, possible. <laughs> right. Sometimes I say get, never, but. I might get. Yeah. Who knows? We might get 9,000 subscribers and I might be able to quit my day job. Who knows? But, um, but I, yeah, I, I'd been thinking about that suggestion since, since we talked about it last month. And I actually have been kicking around some ideas, trying to figure out, well, what's the best way to do it? And who's going to take most of my money when I, you know, when I do record it, Amazon has a couple of different options that are not great. And, less not great and there are some other some others out there i'm doing some research but to long story short i'm planning on starting some recording in the next uh, in the next month and hopefully um around the time maybe in time for christmas i'll have the i'll have a, an audiobook version available nice Ooh, just in time get it done before christmas i'll yes. buy copies and then I can actually take the Christmas vacation that I have planned. <laughs> oh, that would be <laughs> nice. not work very much. All right. Mm -hmm. Any other questions before I uh, before we wrap this up for another? Sure. Moment? What is the meaning of life? Forty-two. <laughs> Forty-two. 42. <laughs> 42. <laughs> yes. Third Everyone check. knows that. <laughs> Lloyd, could I speak to you afterwards? Mm -hmm. Coward. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Cool, 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 cool. All right. Well, guys, have a great night. Guillaume, you thank too. you for bringing the guest. It was wonderful. Oh, to she, have she, you she, here. She's one of your number one fans. You know? that's, that's I, I was gone it. for two months for my son's operation. She downloaded onto our iPad like every single episode and just listened. Nice. To she has good taste. <laughs> I got it. Now I'm really worried about some of the language we use. <laughs> you mean the French? What, what right? do you mean the, we? Uh, excuse, excuse <laughs> French, right? It's like the warnings for television. Now you have to put like drinking references and stuff like that. And right, right. right. <laughs> Warning: there may be alcohol and and. Oh, we, we don't have drinking references. We have drinking displays. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> drinking. Yeah. And this is the most You're depressing. Just amused by the it. most depressing yeah. thing of the night is. The oh, night. oh, that's sad. <laughs> I will mourn for you. Yes. All of the alcohol references just make me laugh. 
<laughs> Good. Well, well then you'll laugh you, a lot with us. As long as they don't make you want to partake yet, that's that's great. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right, Calroy. I'll talk to you in a minute. Everybody else, thank you so much for taking the time to to be here, and uh, we will see you God again. Bless. Next month. Blessings. Right. Yo, good, good evening. God bless you, everybody. Hello. Thank you. Bye bye. Aloha.